In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this turntable render with the preset that's available in Virtual Photography Kit. I'm going to use this gamepad from CG Axis, where you can follow along with any asset. So, when you open up the project, you want to go to Product, and in Cinematics, you can find the turntable level sequence. If you look through the camera and then play, you'll see that we have this rotating animation on the asset and then a rotating animation on the HDRI. But we don't have any HDRI yet, so we're going to download one from Polyhaven. We're going to download this Studio Small 08, because I like this one. And you choose 8K, HDR and download. It's important that it's an HDR because then we can uh, import it into Unreal directly without converting. And let's just import it in here. So when you import it, you just want to make sure that the MIPGEN settings are set to no MIP maps, just so we get a crisp image. And then we go to core. This is where you have all your base settings, uh, but also the HDRI slot. So you can just drag and drop it in there. And we have to make sure that we have some intensity on that as well. So now you can see that it also rotates the HDRI and the lighting follows as well. So now we want to add an asset. Uh, I have an asset from CG Axis that I like. It's a PS5 controller. So we're just going to drag and drop it into the scene and zero out the translation. And it's not rotating yet uh, because we want to replace the rotating placeholder with the gamepad. So select the gamepad, right click the placeholder, and then replace with selected. Now you see it's rotating. We're going to keep these placeholder render balls in the scene and put it um, down there. As you can see now, the pivot isn't at the center, so I just want to fix that first as well, so we have it rotating nicely. So we're just going to create a new blueprint, actor blueprint. call it pivot fix. Open that up, add the controller in there, and then put it at the center, so we have the center of gravity about there in the middle. I think that's going to be just fine. And then instead of having the controller mesh in here, we're now going to have the fixed pivot mesh instead. So we're going to drag and drop that one, and we're going to replace the old controller with the new one. And we can just remove the old controller now. And now we see it's rotating much more nicely. Just going to adjust the location of this one put it here. I think that's good. We're just going to adjust the HDRI a little bit. Maybe something like that. And then adjust the camera a little bit. So make sure you're looking through the camera and then just right click and fly towards the controller here with the WASD on your keyboard. We're going to frame it nicely like that. See how that works out. Looks pretty nice. Maybe we'll take this down just a little bit more. And then we want to add a light. So right now we're using the studio lighting preset and it actually contains eight lights. So we're going to remove all but one. 
and then I'm gonna fly with this light here. So control shift P to jump into the camera so you pilot it. That's a nice way to adjust the light. So we're gonna find a good spot here. We're gonna make it brighter. Something like that. And if you now rotate this, you can see that the HDR is rotating, but this light that we placed is not rotating. So we just wanna fix that so it also rotates with the HDRI, as if it was a part of this studio lighting setup. So first we have to make sure that it's uh, in the same level as the core blueprint that we wanna attach it to. So you see it's under the product level, but the light is under the studio level. So what you wanna do is to move over the light from studio to product. So what you can do is now that the persistent level is selected, which is the product level, you can just click the light and then press Control M and it moves over to the currently selected level. So now we just want to parent the light under the core blueprint. And then we also have to make sure that we're actually rotating the core blueprint. So from this key, I want to set a key and then at the end, I want to set another key minus 360. So now you can see in this viewport that the light is rotating together with the HDRI or the core blueprint, which contains the HDRI. What you see here now is that it's cutting through the backdrop here. So we just want to fix that quickly. So you just move it back until we don't see that cut anymore. I think this works nicely. Looks a bit dark here. So maybe we want to increase the HDRI intensity just a little bit more. I think this is nice. So what you can see here is that this extra light here is giving some nice shadows here and some nice highlights on the plastic there. Just so we get to see all of the nice lines and shapes of this controller. So what we want to do now is to render this out in a very, very high resolution video just to make it as crisp as possible. So what we want to make sure here is that this sequence, the turntable sequence, is the selected sequence here. So we choose it there. We want to render out a video first and it can be saved in the default location. We're going to name it the default name. We want to increase these samples here to nine. I think that's a good value to get a, a crisp image. And then there's a bunch of default console variables that are good to have, so I won't touch these. So now we just press render and see what it looks like. Actually what I want to do, I cancel this now and just fix one last thing before we render this out. And that is to just adjust the focal length of the camera so we get a nice flat perspective. So select the camera and then just zoom in a bit. 80 is good maybe. And then we'll just zoom out. And this is much nicer compared to what we had before. If I exaggerate, it feels like a fisheye lens and the control looks very, very round. And that not, that's not what we want to do with this product shot, because we want to show the controller the shapes as it would be more in the real life. So let's set it to 80 and put it there. Another thing that we need to remember is to set the focus point as well. By default, the focus point is here, so we'll just set it on the logo there, I think that's a good spot for the focus to be. Another thing that we might want to do is 
uh, to turn off the motion blur. So this is a matter of taste, uh, but many turntables are rendered without motion blur, and that's just because when you have a turntable, you might want to just scrub back and forth and look at the product, and you don't want it to be blurry then, so you always want to have a sharp image. So you can do that easily in the core blueprint by finding the motion blur parameter here and just set that to zero. 0 0.5 is default, uh, but let's set that to zero to get rid of it altogether. And now render. So let's have a look at the video. Open folder. We go to the turntable sequence. It should be at the bottom here. And I think it looks pretty good. If you want to have an extra crisp image, uh, like I showed in the beginning of this, of this video, um, you should render out in 4K. So that's going to be super nice. It takes a while, so I'm not going to do that right now. And if you just want to have a still image, I'll just show you how to do that as well. Choose still image as the render preset here. And then you use custom frame range set the end frame to one because we just want one frame you can choose your image formats i'm gonna leave it at png now and spatial samples you can also leave it's fine and then render and it's going to be 4k now because we chose that preset and with that done open folder again go to ls turntable you'll find the image at the bottom and I think this looks really nice. So that's how you do a turntable render and a still image in Virtual Photography Kit.